It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. On today's podcast, Bob and I are going to break down some of the worst financial products, just things you need to avoid that Wall Street's trying to sell you. We're going to talk about risk. What is your risk tolerance? Are you taking too much risk? Are you taking enough risk? How would you know? We're going to talk everything risk-related in your portfolio. And we're going to take some questions from our email mailbag today. We're going to talk about how to pull money from your portfolio in the most tax-efficient way. We're going to talk about having too much money in savings, what's the right amount, how to invest that cash. So stick around. It's going to be a great show. Hope you enjoy it. So let's hop to it. Bob, if you and I were on the yearbook committee at the School of Financial Tools and Strategies... We would have to name a winner for the following superlatives to recognize some of the best and worst investment products Wall Street has to offer. And the first one would be the teacher's pet. You know, what product comes to mind to you when we're talking about the teacher's pet? Hey, wait, wait, wait. Before we start this, I went to look for your yearbook. I couldn't find it, but I'm trying to remember. Weren't you voted most likely to succeed by your yearbook committee? <laughs> no, I definitely wasn't. <laughs> I no, would have voted for okay. myself. <laughs> your mom thought appreciate- you were. <laughs> well, my dad thinks I should have been the best, but hey, that doesn't get you for a well, You far are the best, so that's uh, you know. So, hey, look, you're, you're, you've already succeeded, so who needs most likely? Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, but in the product, in the financial world, what product would we call the teacher's pet if we had to pick one product out there in the world of Wall Street? Hands down, that's a that's a softball question, right? It's the mutual fund industry, definitely the teacher pet of financial services. Yes. Why do brokers love to sell you mutual funds? I mean, we have we probably run hundreds of reviews every month for people. And what we find is you always own so many freaking mutual funds. We know they're high cost, tax inefficient. Why do so many people own mutual funds, Bob? Maybe it's because they uh, underperform, right? Is that it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that why? Maybe it's because there's a lot so. of incentives for that broker to sell them to you. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's what it comes down to. You have the mutual fund industry is paying these big firms for the privilege of having their salesmen sell the funds. And then there's wholesalers. These are people who sell mutual funds to financial advisors, to stockbrokers, and push that product so they push it on you. Yeah, it's like similar to back in the day where the pharmaceutical rep would come in, see the doctor, take him on a trip, and all of a sudden, that's what the doctor was recommending to you, those pharmaceuticals. Not because it was the best interest of you, but because the sales rep gave him the best trip. And that's kind of what it's like with mutual funds as well. There's big incentives on the back end that you don't see so that they're, that they're actually in your portfolio. Simply put, Rye, you're right. It's the old school, most expensive option in the past. Check with your advisor, check with your stockbroker, find out why he's not working in the present in your best interest. Yes. Go through those statements and ask them because it's uh, it's certainly not where your portfolio needs to be today. The other one is most expensive, Bob. You know Who would be the culprit of being the most expensive when it comes to the financial product world? Well, it's what I'm going to do when I come back in my next life, right? I'm going to come back as an insurance company because <laughs> they always make money and their clients don't always make money, and their products are always the most expensive. Yes, exactly. You like to say, Bob, You know, the glossier the brochure, the thicker it is, the more you're probably paying for that insurance product. Yeah, again, it comes down to you know, insurance salesmen aren't held to a higher standard. They're not fiduciaries. They're not required by law to work in your best interest. They're, they're, you know, they represent the insurance company, and they're going to try and make as much money as they can for the insurance company, for them. And then yeah, if you do well, well... That's just an added bonus. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And a lot of these whole life policies where it's you get a death benefit, plus it's an investment, tends to be a lot more expensive than you just getting a cheap term policy, let's say, and you invest your money on your own. We like to say a lot of times investing in insurance products is just a very expensive way to invest. Yeah, and you know, don't get me wrong, right? Insurance is a necessary evil. It's something you need to have to protect your family. But you can't just trust one insurance agent to give you the opinion or to give you a recommendation where they're giving you the best deal. You've got to really shop it. Yeah, absolutely. You have to shop it and know what you're paying. In the same vein, Bob, um, in terms of investments, the most likely to disappoint, I would put that into the insurance category as well. What would you consider to be the most likely to disappoint out of all investment products? 
Over 45 years of uh, helping people achieve their financial goals, right? The most disappointing investment in history, annuities. Yes, annuities. They sound so good. It's like you used to say, Bob, like Chinese food. It tastes so good going down, but you feel so empty later. <laughs> it's probably the best way to describe an annuity. Well, that's the problem, right? They're, they're very complex contracts, and you know they're so like, simple you know, terms. Get all the upside, none of the downside. There's no fees. There's no commissions. You know, that's not true. And they're very expensive. They're very complex. And they're always disappointing to the investor at the end of the day. Yes. When you hear things like income for life sounds so good, sounds so sexy. But the reality of it is when you break these contracts down, it's like they're paying your money back to you over time with maybe a little bit of interest, but you're giving up your principal. There's always a catch when it comes to an annuity, typically. Did you tell me, Rye, with an annuity, it's like um, you know, borrowing your watch every day so I can find out what time it is? <laughs> pretty much, Bob. Pretty much. So again, you need to understand what you own or you know, if you can get out of that annuity, but there's, there's a lot of complexities there that you need to understand. Get it reviewed, or if you're going to buy one, do a lot of homework. The other superlative to Bob is most popular right now. There's one investment that investors are putting their money into droves right now, and it's not necessarily the best place to be putting your money. Oh, it must be a uh, stock market, right? It's all-time record highs. We've been in a 10-year big booming bull market, but it's not. Believe it or not, no. with interest rates dropping like a rock, it's going into bond funds. Yes, it's the most popular investment right now. In fact, Bob, people are putting money into investments that are yielding a negative yield right now. That's how crazy it is. People are just going crazy about putting money into bond funds, and you and I know that could end very, very badly here. I don't know. You've, you've only known me all your life. Um, you know, you <laughs> might not know how I feel about bond funds. You know, I've described them as the weapons of portfolio mass destruction. No, exactly, Bob, because there's no principal protection. You put your money into a bond fund, you're not guaranteed to get it back. And worse, right now, you're locking into really low yields. It could be like 2%, maybe 3% if you're lucky, which is not going to keep up with the cost of living. But worse, if interest rates go up, Bond prices go down, and all of a sudden, everybody's selling at the same time, and it can be a disaster. And, you know, the Federal Reserve cut interest rate this week, right, for their sole purpose of trying to inflate the economy. They're trying to generate inflation. If you get higher inflation, you get higher interest rates, you know what you get with a bond fund? A very bad return. <laughs> a very bad return, yes. Yeah. Bond funds are evil. Now's a good time to get out of them. You know, if everybody's buying them, you want to be selling them. Yeah, exactly right. And to your point, Bob, right now is probably a good time. Always make a decision when the wind's at your back because if rates go up, people are selling, it's too late. Now is the time to act. Look at your portfolio. Look and see if you have bond funds. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture. Simply bring those statements in. July is over, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to take all of that data, take all those investments, and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal. We're going to analyze everything at a bird's eye view. We're going to look at all those critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in those investment products, those insurance products, annuities, mutual funds. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. What are the underlying risks in your portfolio? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof or protect your portfolio throughout retirement. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical for your retirement. How are you going to fill in that income gap when you stop working or if you're retired now? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you have a stream of income that you cannot live. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan utilizing strategies now we have literally worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit our website bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation call or text 844-752-6692 that's 844-752-6692 or simply click the get started button on bebullish.com
Get a clear picture of your finances. I can't see nothing. Got to open my eye. Let's get back to the show. So, Bob, how do you describe risk tolerance to someone who isn't familiar with the concept? We hear a lot about risk, but what does it really mean in context of your financial planning? Well, first of all, Ry, every firm in the industry, in the financial services industry, uses a risk tolerance questionnaire. Now, do they yes. actually work? It's CYA, right? They use them because if you ever go back and want to sue that firm, they'll say, well, well, you took this risk tolerance test. And the problem with the risk tolerance test is it's kind of a one size fits all approach. You talk about this a lot, Bob, but your perception of risk changes depending on how you're feeling. And that's not a great way to create an investment strategy. Well, last month, Rai, your portfolio hit an all time record high. How are you going to answer those questions? Are you going to be more optimistic or more pessimistic? Yeah, well, human nature is when things are going well, we're feeling good, we're more optimistic, and we think our risk tolerance is actually higher, which is not necessarily true. Well, I just read a good article the other day. I just spoke about this and, and said simply that this risk tolerance questionnaire means absolutely nothing. It has no impact on how you're going to act in the future. You know, the, really, the only way to truly gauge you know, your tolerance of risk is to go back to 2008 and 2009 and see what did you do with your portfolio? What, how did you react, you know, to the market dropping dramatically? And chances are, right, you're going to act the same way going forward. Well, the other thing is, too, when we look back in retrospect, we forget how bad we felt, too. So we, we deceive ourselves mm -hmm. a little bit as well. We might think, oh, well, I handled it really well. I just waited and the market came back. I know that mentality really well. Well, there's two problems with that. Number one, you forget how you really felt when everyone on the financial media was telling you that it's the end of the world. Number two, Bob, you're 10 years older now. You can't afford the same risk you could 10 years ago, even if you think you could you know, weather the storm, per se. So what you're telling me, Rai, is uh, you know, throw away that risk tolerance questionnaire because you're not going to tell the truth when you answer it. Go back and look <laughs> at your 2009 statements, and that is the lie detector test right, of how you're actually going to act. Yes, exactly. And I love you know that we talk about this a lot, but putting your portfolio under the stress test. What you want to know today is, like, how did your portfolio perform in the past? So we do that all the time. We'll, we'll take a portfolio and we'll look at it and say, hey, guess what? If this was 2008. Your portfolio would have gone down by 40%. Or in other words, you want to see your portfolio go down by four or $500,000. And most of you will say, no, I don't want to do that. That's terrible. Yeah. If you have a $5 million portfolio and all of a sudden... We're showing you at the end of 12 months, you only have a $3 million portfolio. I don't care how brave you are, you're going to panic. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to be cool under pressure. So that's one side of the equation. You need to know what your downside risk is and if you're taking too much risk, Bob. But we also have the problem of not taking enough risk. And that's a big problem right now because let's face it, a lot of us, we're sitting with a lot of money in cash, earning nothing, and that doesn't help you get to your goals. You know, Ryan, that's why our whole process, our A to B process is so critical because each and every one of you is unique. You're unique in who you are as a person. You're unique in your needs and your goals. You're unique in how you feel about risk and how you actually react to risk. So we created a device, so to speak, right, called A to B. And that's the only way, in my opinion, to construct a portfolio. Yeah. And that's just simply saying, like, what risk do you actually need in your portfolio, right? Because we know when you get to a certain age, you're getting close to retirement, you can't take extreme risk. But we know on the other side of the spectrum, you can't have all your money in cash because cost of living is going to go up, right? I mean, your cost of living, your purchasing power is going to get cut in half every 20 years. So every million dollars you have today, Bob, is only worth $500,000 20 years from now. So you need some sort of growth on your portfolio. Yeah, but Rob, that sounds good. But don't you think you're sitting there right now, you're thinking, hey, I invest because I want to make money. Is making money a goal? No. That's like the worst way to invest because it doesn't right. mean anything, right? Because it's it, it's not in context to anything of like you spending your money, which is the most important thing. Like, Is the money going to be there when I need to spend it? I think is the real question you need to ask yourself. Yeah, that's the question. It's like, I, you know, sure, you want to make money. Who doesn't? But why do you need to make money, right? What's the purpose of that money? You know, if it's to uh, fund an education, if it's to, you know, put a down payment down for your for your child's home, is it to fund your retirement? Now, there's a goal. Now, there's a reason to, to make money. So you don't want to take risk for the sake of taking risk because that ends in tears, right? You want to have specific goals. You have to articulate those goals. And then you work backwards to point A to come up with, you know, who are you financially and exactly what portfolio strategy you need to take. 
Yeah, and that's so important because, look, we can all afford to make a lot, a lot of money, meaning we can all afford for our portfolio to go up big at any given year. It's like, I'd love to see my portfolio go up by 40%. That's great, but what we can't afford is to lose 40% on our portfolio because we may never make that back. So, you know, it really comes down to figuring out like what's the amount of money you actually need to make and what is your downside risk to make that money to keep your lifestyle intact. Oh, come on, Ryan. Investing on purpose, it sounds so simple. <laughs> it sounds simple, but let's be real. We don't do it, right? We tend to have a collection of investments because we have an advisor over here. We have a 401k over here. We have our, our neighbor over here tells us about our cowboy account that we have over here. So we don't really have a concerted effort that's for our goals. And it's probably the biggest mistake you're making right now when it comes to your investment life. Yeah, it sounds like that a lot of you like to have an event type portfolio where you're going to invest based on the Fed cutting interest rates or the GDP going up. That's really not what it's about. It's about investing on purpose. It's about investing based on your goals. So you build a strategy that uh, ends up being an all weather strategy, right, right? So you can handle whatever the economy or the markets throw at you. And it's something where you get to understand what you own and you know why you own it. Yeah, no. Exactly right. It goes back to what you say, Bob. It's about putting your portfolio to the sleep point, right? You want to be able to sleep at night, but you need the right amount of risk so that 20 years from now, when you're still drawing money from your portfolio, your portfolio has grown enough that you can still comfortably live off your portfolio. So you need to find out that right amount of risk for your own portfolio. And that's very, very personalized. The things we talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That's why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. It's the only review you're ever going to need. Bring in all your statements. We're going to sit down. We're going to review everything with you. And you know what? We're going to help you build your own 360 financial portal, which will allow you to become financially organized and view your complete financial life in real time at your convenience when you feel like looking at it. We're going to break down your portfolio to see if you are currently invested based on your goals, not based on you know what the markets are doing. We want to be certain that you have the three key elements of a successful strategy covered. Diversification. Hey, Wall Street speaks ad nauseum about diversification, but we're talking about true diversification where you don't have any overlap in your portfolio, where you don't have any hidden risk, where you have too much of a good thing that turns out to be a bad thing in the next downturn in the market. Cost, you know, fees, being overcharged. Boy, I hate being overcharged. I don't want to be overcharged by my own portfolio. There's plenty of fees that are hidden that are buried deep in the prospectus of that mutual fund or in that annuity contract. We are experts at finding and revealing those fees. We want to see what's behind that curtain so it doesn't cost you in the long run. An income, you know, in retirement, we all need to fill that gap once that paycheck stops coming. And if you're currently retired, your number one goal should be to stay retired and income is the key to that strategy. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we answer this age old question for your family. Is your money going to outlive you or are you going to outlive your money? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, my family's been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams, to your point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844 844- 752-6692 and tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or click the get started button on bbullish.com. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. If you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I will answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, 
We'll answer it right here on the show. And to help with questions today, we have our producer, Dan Irving, in the studio. What's up, Dan? How's it going today, my man? Hello, Ryan and Bob. I got an exciting week up ahead. I'm moving into a new place with one of my bandmates, so I'm looking forward to a larger living space and making lots of new music. I feel bad for your neighbors already, Dan. (laughs) (laughs) Is your bandmate a drummer? Guitarist, thankfully, but uh, maybe we'll be uh, (laughs) keeping up our neighbors writing a theme song for this mailbag segment. You know what? (laughs) I'm going to hold you to that. (laughs) We'd love a theme song for our mailbag section. (laughs) All right. I'll get right to it. Our uh, first question of the day comes from Mike in Lloyd's Neck, Long Island, and he says, Bob, we have over $250,000 in our savings account, and it drives me crazy to see that money just sitting there doing nothing. I want to invest the money, but my wife isn't on board with that plan because she says having that money in the bank makes her feel secure. How much cash do we need? How do I convince her that this is too much money that's just collecting dust? I'm not the crazy one here, right? (laughs) Hey, Mike, that's a great question. It's very timely. You know, I I seem to get this uh, question almost on a weekly basis. I just had one of our clients' children uh, come into $500,000 a couple of months ago, and they were referred to us. And the same situation. They were afraid to do anything. Um, yes. When they first got the money, they sort they dabbled in the stock market, and you know his dad said to him, "Oh, are you are you good at investing?" He said, "Well, I was doing really well, and then it wasn't so good." Um, you know, it <laughs> sounds like the same thing that happens when somebody goes to a casino, but um, you know they don't know what to do, and what happens is you end up with paralysis by analysis. And as you've talked ad nauseum this week. 250000 in cash is a bad place to be. You know, what yeah. do you think Mike should do? Well, first off, I mean, you have to have a reserve, right? We recommend this for our clients, and we always say good rule of thumb, and we would tweak this for you individually, but like six months worth of expenses probably makes sense just to have it liquid in cash. You don't want to have all your money invested. You never want to do that. But to your point, Bob, when you get to these excessive amounts, I think what you have to think about is you don't want an all or none situation because it's a little nerve wracking, right? We have all time high right now in the US stock market. So you might be thinking, well, if I put money in the stock market, of course, I'm going to put it in at the top here and then the market's going to go right down. I made a a terrible, disastrous decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a problem. I mean, I remember years ago in the Wall Street Journal, there was a picture of an investor sitting in a chair and a quote balloons over his head saying, you know, oh, the market's at an all-time high. Should I ruin it for everybody and put my money in and <laughs> therefore make it crash? You know, it's just that feeling that uh, you know markets have to go down. You know, when you make a decision, but you're right, it has, doesn't have to be all or none. You have to be diversified. You can dollar cost average in. You're going to dollar cost average out. It's really the way to do it. But you know, Mike's a perfect candidate for what we've been talking about on the show uh, for the last couple of months. He needs his own unique strategy based on he and his wife on what they want to accomplish, what they want for their children. You know, there's lots of goals that uh, they have to fund. They need their own personal GPS, financial GPS, what we call our A to B strategy, right? Yeah, no, I love about that is, Bob, when you put your goals down, it's not a hard decision because now it's just you plug the money in where it needs to go, right? I mean, it's like, oh, Mm -hmm. we need some growth on our money. So that has to go into this portfolio over here, or we need some more safety in our portfolio has to go into this portfolio here but it takes all the guesswork out of it. Because when you have a game plan, it's just like, let's put it, let's execute where it needs to be executed as opposed to these emotional feelings. You know, I always hear that people say to me, oh, I just don't feel right about the market now. I don't feel right about this. Well, if you're doing that and you're making your plan on emotion, you're in big trouble. It should be pragmatic based on your goals. Then it's like, okay, we need to put the money here because it correlates with this goal to buy a house or, you know, for my long-term retirement plan, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah, you know what, Ryan, it comes down to, you know, I don't feel good about the market as opposed to I don't feel good about paying unnecessary taxes. I don't feel good about failing to achieve my financial goals. So you, you just change that whole conversation around when you put the plan in place, when you do the wealth projections, when you look at all the opportunities to save money on taxes and to invest intelligently, you know, based on your goals. It's no longer a, you know, all or none decision. It's basically a common sense conclusion. And it's based on your goals, your personality, your money, your risk tolerance, nobody else's. All right, Mike, thank you for writing in. Our next question is from Gary in Red Bank, New Jersey. And Gary says, Ryan, our daughter will be getting married within the next year, and we're expecting it to be a relatively small affair, although I'm sure we wouldn't be the first people to be wrong about that if it ends up being more expensive than we think. 
Most of our savings is in retirement accounts, and I don't want to pay a lot of taxes by withdrawing money to pay for a wedding. Are there any other ideas you have for people in our position? Well, Gary, Bob can commiserate with you because he's about to pay for a wedding too, and I know it's going to be way more money than he expects it to be. That's another story altogether. I digress. It's, it's a good thought because, again, we talk about this all the time, money saved in taxes, just as green as any money can make invested. And if you pull money out of your retirement accounts, as we know, you're going to pay a lot of taxes on that money up front. Now, there's ways, Bob, we can do this creatively. One thing comes to mind to me is if you have a 401k, you might be able to take a loan against that 401k, pay it back to yourself later so there's no tax consequences. Yeah, you're better yet, right? You really got to set a budget for a wedding. If you just have an open-ended uh, wedding, it's going to cost you a lot more. You, you got to set a budget. It's it's that simple. And that's all part of planning. And it's it's amazing. You know, over the last 45 years, all the folks and families that I've worked with, I've seen these weddings get funded. And uh, generally, you know, I keep smelling salts in the office when somebody has three or four daughters and we estimate what the <laughs> wedding expenses are going to be, compounded, you know, in future dollars. Uh, it scares the daylights out of you. But again, it's an expense. It's a planning issue and something that we all need to address, not just weddings, but, you know, every aspect of our financial life. Yes. And when it comes time to draw that money, again, considering taxes is huge. And it's a lot of creative things you can do, whether it's a loan from your 401k. And this is the same thing when it comes to retirement as well. Do you have a plan for how you're going to draw the money from your portfolio? And keeping taxes in mind is a really key part of that. So for any of these goals you have, weddings, going on a trip, how you're going to draw from your portfolio in retirement really requires a lot of brainstorming to come up with the optimal way to do that. You need what we call an income distribution plan. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 888, or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.